Los Angeles County has one of the largest homeless populations in the country, and I'm not bragging. It is horrible. These are people living on the streets, people just like you and I. They're not any less of human beings. What's astonishing is that the homeless population across all segments and demographics are growing by an enormous rate because of the global pandemic. So we have to be part of the solution. And today, we're gonna to make a difference. So obviously during these times, in the midst of a pandemic, masks and safety are of the utmost importance. We talk about that all the time. People should wear masks. But we never talk about the homeless population and the needs that they have because some of us don't think about them. As part of a partnership between MCA and the LA Dodgers, we're actually going to be passing out 100,000 masks. That covers all of the homeless population and then some. So we brought these high quality masks here today. We decided to deliver thousands of them. This is our first location. The LA Dodgers are gonna help us distribute this across all of Los Angeles County. 100,000 of them. Bottom line, Muslim Coalition for America is here. Proud to be here with the Dodgers to support uh, our homeless, our most vulnerable populations. Everybody deserves to have a chance to protect themselves during the pandemic. And the homeless population is a deserving population that deserves our attention. We gotta take care of our people here. Uh, during the pandemic, and so Muslim Coalition for America is extraordinarily proud uh, to work with the Dodgers, to partner with the Dodgers, and be here um, at the Safe Place for Youth. So I'm here with Rachel. Yeah, hi, so I'm Rachel. I'm the Deputy Director here at Safe Place for Youth. Um, we are a homeless service provider for young people experiencing homelessness ages 12 to 25. I really want to know why is it that everybody isn't just rushing to help the homeless? Like, homeless come in, you know, all creeds, all religions, yeah. genders, you know, all everything that you can imagine, colors. It, it, it's kind of a reflection of all of our society. And so yet these folks who are so disenfranchised don't get the support and a lot of the attention that it really deserves. Yeah, I think there's, um, there's a lot of misinformation and um, lack of understanding of why someone might become homeless. Um, you know, in Los Angeles, we are the most expensive place to live um, in the country. And, um, you know, we have a housing crisis here. And in addition to that, we have issues within the way our systems work that put people in a position where they're not able to, you know, survive and keep a job or have a place to live. And they need the, the support and resources to be able to help them get back on their feet. And unfortunately, there's a lot of resistance to that because people don't have the understanding of what why someone became homeless. That's a great place. question. I, I, I think there's a lot of victim blaming and shaming mm -hmm. um, that helps people justify like why this happens to them and it's not you, right. it's just them and this is an isolated problem. Mm -hmm. It could happen to anybody really. Absolutely. For you to have to be on the streets thinking about shel shelter and food, the most basic yeah. am amenities in life, and then people kind of like slinging harsh words at you saying, why don't you try harder? It is so unfortunate and like it is this, this sort of aggression I think is extremely misplaced. I think if we spent our energy trying to do good things and constructive things with the community, we would probably get so much further. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think, um, like you said, when you see someone on the streets, they are in survival mode and they can't even, you can't even think about a job or a roof over your head or how you're going to get yourself out of this when you're just trying to figure out, you know, how you're going to get food in your stomach and how you're going to survive. And so, um, you know, the young people that we serve here at Safe Place for Youth are, are unbelievably resilient. Every day when they're here on site with us, I'm like blown away by the hope and the resiliency for them to move forward past, you know, all of the horrible things that they've endured. And um, like I said, it's really just about giving them that connection, that support so that, you know, they can do it on their own. Well, Rachel, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. Doing good is an awesome thing. I think there's opportunity to do good every day of our lives. And yet a lot of us just pass that opportunity by on a regular basis. Today, we did not pass that opportunity by. Today, we decided to do good. And I'm here with Naomi. She's the Vice President of External Affairs for the Los Angeles Dodgers. 
Now, during these unprecedented times, the Dodgers, we have asked ourselves, you know, a few questions. One is how we can repurpose or reimagine our stadium and do things to help our community. So we're doing COVID testing. We have the largest COVID testing site in California, if not in the country. We've tested over 430,000 people. One of the most important things we'll do. And when the Muslim Coalition of America came to us and said, you know, we wanna make sure that every person experiencing homelessness has access to a mask. Can you help us distribute it? Absolutely. I mean, the Dodgers are part of the cultural fabric in Los Angeles. We're not just a team, you know, we're, we're an experience, we're, we're a family. We mean something to our fans. Our fans mean something to us. Our story doesn't end at the championship. Our story starts at our championship, what we're doing on the field and what we're doing off the field. And it is part of our responsibility. It is part of our obligation to do things like this, to make sure our community has access to very basic needs. And in this pandemic, our basic needs have sort of shifted a little, right? You know, seven months ago, we wouldn't have needed a mask. Every person needs access to a mask now. I mean, today we're just, we're giving them a mask because it's an essential part of what they need, but they need so much more. And so we, we also know what comes along with the Dodger brand is, is uh, passion and love and hope and hope. It's a big part of who we are. Do not, we never take that for granted. This incredible, and it may sound cliche, but this incredible platform that we have been blessed with called the Los Angeles Dodgers, right? Not taking that for granted. I love that message. And I'm hoping that for those of us who like, we just can't get out there and physically participate and do something. I'm hoping that we can at least change our mentality. And I think I love the platform that the Dodgers has and the ability to just say, exercise hope and change your mentality and don't look at these people who have had already a, a really horrible hand dealt to them. Don't make it worse, make it better. And I think that's what we started to do today and I, I can't thank you enough for that. Thank you. So this is what we're doing. We know we're in the midst of a global pandemic and that there are a lot of people out there that are hurting. So we want to do something about it. That started off by donating a ton of masks to the community. Ultimately, that wasn't enough. We're making sure that we get out there and hear the stories of those on the ground to understand what are the needs and are we doing a good job of staying connected and understanding what other people are going through. That's part of being empathetic. That's why these stories are important. But it doesn't stop here. We're going to be going to San Francisco and other locations to make sure that those in need are actually being well served. And ultimately, if you can't do the work yourself, make sure you change your perspective because that goes a long way. Ultimately, we need to build bridges, not walls. And that's how we can come together as a nation during a time of crisis.